<laughs> more than six. I love the curveball. Yeah, yeah. I, I still have it in my, you know, my door, actually. And there were many, many projects. And, and uh, I think, you know, in essence, I want to do it all. I mean, there were so many ideas, and I thought, one mile of streetscape, what can you do? But the only thing I didn't want to do was plop something on one location. I did not want to do that. So I had several different ideas. And uh, one of them even, um, which I still might consider doing someday, maybe it has to be a guerrilla activity, was to take these old uh, police call, uh, those uh, black, yeah. cast iron things. I don't know if any of you might recall this, but I found some of them on the street, and I want to salvage them, and sandblast them, and paint it fluorescent green. And instead of a police call and emergency call, I was going to call it nature call, so that the dogs can go there and do their little thing. So, uh, you know, and then actually when you hit the button, I wanted to have the songs of the birds, of the local birds coming out. So there was more than, you know, for dogs. But anyway, a lot of different things happened, and that was not uh, allowed to do. Um, but I think when I went to the Arts Commission, I think I went there several times with my proposals. And ultimately, you know, um, late Dennis Oppenheim, who came to see my project in my studio, and it was actually him who said, keep it simple, do the strongest piece, and forget about everything else. You know, don't mix all these ideas, just do one thing that's the strongest. And that was like the flash of light went to my head, and I thought, thanks Dennis, I think it is the tree. And, um, you know, I also want to give credit to uh, Jen Cooper, who worked very closely with us, and she's, she went off to Harvard, got her degree. But we literally picked, hand-picked every single tree. We went to the nursery in New Jersey, and it was a cold winter day, and we picked over 100 trees, you know? I mean, really looking at the trees, looking at the shape, looking at the leaves, kind of hugging the tree, this little sapling, <laughs> and we picked 100 trees. And then the six trees, um, one of them I had to use uh, because of the site condition, existing tree, which is a site five, which will walk over. But other than that, I was able to pick the native New York trees. And the idea is really to take the tree, and just like when your baby is born, the parents would make the footprint of the baby, right? This is the tree that would make, you know, literally, I wanted the shadow of the tree to set in stone like a jewel and it would mark the time and that would mark the history because the trees will grow and they will never be the same shape or you know or you know branches and trees will just keep growing but you will have a reminder and I think in this neighborhood I do see a lot of people now with baby strollers and I think the next generation and the next generation maybe in 20 or 30 years a little child who walked on the street when the tree was only this tall might see a big tree. And I think that kind of marking is really the essence of this, um, this uh, project. And I really wanted to thank many, many people who are here. First and most, Sydney, who really stuck with this whole project, even to the last minute, when I had a little problem with, you know, like this sand and the dry pack, and I would call her and she would call me back after 6 o'clock and 7 o'clock she would respond to me. Sarah for support, being supportive you know, for the last few years. Victoria for many, many years from the beginning. Uh, Sophia also for the last several months, you supported me. And Zinia, who's not here, who supported me. Mike Cetera, who was also uh, part of the DDC when I first started. Mark Nastor, who helped me with the graphics of all the trees. Uh, my colleague is here, uh, Paul. He always kept asking, when is going to be that? <laughs> He's on Kane Street. And he always said to me, when is going to be, when is this done? When is going to be done? You know, he's here now to enjoy. Um, I have many other people. Let's see, uh, my neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> and from, uh, from Chelsea, I guess. And many people who actually uh, came today. And I, I have to say, I made a lot of friends during the installation. I was here for two and a half weeks. And one of the person who did, wrote to me, uh, I'm just going to read this because, um, one thing that's different is eight years ago, I didn't need a reading glass. Yeah. <laughs> that's the difference. Um, anyway, this is a story I want to really share because this is a, a woman who uh, wrote me a few days ago. And I met her husband as I was installing the tree number six and he was walking his dog. And she said, can I tell my um, wife to write this little story or, or to write a little blog 
uh, uh, about your tree cast. And uh, I don't know whether she, um, uh, she put this up yet. And unfortunately, she said she couldn't make it today. But this is a little story that she shared with me a couple days ago. Um, last month, and her name is Andrea Johnson. Last, uh, late last month, on my walk home from the bus stop, I noticed dozens of chalk arrows under my feet in a rainbow of colors uh, pointing ahead. As I followed the arrows, the words street magic appeared over and over in different colors. When I got home, I learned that it was a local young person, a little girl, had put on a sidewalk magic show that afternoon. The next morning, I returned to the photograph to, to photograph the arrows. But where the arrows had been, there would be a perfect square of sidewalk. Uh, the sidewalk had been removed, and a gap was ringed by construction tape. The following day, a new square of slate of blue stone in the sidewalk magically appeared. Carved into it was a perfect silhouette of the tree growing next to it. It was one of the six sites in a new public art project by Nebuhu Nagasawa titled Time Cast. And uh, I think, you know, magic happened. <laughs> so thank you very much. And let's take it.